Today's video is brought to you by URCD Keys, the best source for Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys at deeply discounted prices. More details at the end of the video. Way comes in with a question, well, question slash comment slash observation, and it is... He currently has a Ryzen 5 3600 on an MSI B450 Gaming Pro Max motherboard. And he realized that six cores is a mistake. Hold on a second. I just wanna I just wanna sit here for a second. I told you so. For all well, I don't wanna say <laughs> no, that to Way. Oh no, I would I, I told everybody else. So. Okay, right. How many times have I been saying in the past year yep. you don't build a new six core machine in 2021? If you have one, that doesn't mean you have to replace it. If you've already gotten one from previous years, I get it, I understand. There's a use case for them. Well, just listen to his use case. Well, I know, but it's just, I basically said, look, if you have the money to build a brand new six core, the i5-10400 for 150 bucks is an exception just because of price. But a Ryzen 5 5600X for 300 is pretty dumb. Yes. If you've got 300 bucks for a CPU, spend 400, get eight cores and be done with it. Okay. Now that I have that off of my off of off of off of my chest, carry on. His use case. This is where it gets interesting. Multiple monitors, 1440p, 60 frames a second, mainly coding for work, and he's playing some casual AAA games. And he knows what. Well, he wants to know what should I upgrade to, Intel or AMD? Multiple monitors, multitasking development work, and gaming. This screams multitasking. This screams needing a good CPU. Now, here's your issue. You've got a B450. Yep. He didn't say... And what, to be blunt... He didn't say what, what GPU. Well, it is a Max board, so it has the 32 megabyte BIOS. It's, it's, so it's, it's the refreshed board, which is good. The downside is that I would no more put a Zen 3 on that no, chip than I, I could throw it. I was going to say, don't do that. He is screaming for a Ryzen 9 5900X. A whole new system, though. Which also means he should replace his motherboard. I'm sure people will disagree with me there, but I wouldn't even attempt to put a 5900X on that B450 Gaming Pro board. I mean, I mean you can, but nah, you do what you want. I think that justifies that. Here's a question. How much RAM do you have? Because he doesn't list how much RAM he's got. He does not. If you've got 16, then absolutely without even... I don't even need to know anymore. You should be having 32. And if you have 32, I would make the argument that if you're going to make that upgrade, you need 64. Four. Exactly. I went to 64 on my home personal machine, and a lot of people laughed. I did that December of last year in 2020. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were, oh, it's ridiculous. Gaming machines, you don't even need 32 gigs. What are you doing with 64, dude? You're just nuts. Um... <laughs> Are you sure about that? Pull it up. I, uh, pardon the, uh, pardon the interruption here in this bite-sized tech. Take that 64 gigs of RAM. This is on my current machine at home, which is an i9-9900K 8-core 16-thread uh, CPU. And that is my 64 gigs of RAM at home. Now, it's true that I'm not fully utilizing all 64. Can you imagine if I only had 32? No, oh, they really can't see it because you, you... Oh, are we in the way? Yep. There we go. Is that better? There we go. So, yeah, I mean... So using 20... I'm using over 50% of my 64 gigs. And keep in mind, Windows is using all of it. The rest is used for cache and inactive tasks and background I think, programs. I think people forget about the cache. They think, well, unless I'm using 80% of my RAM, I don't need to upgrade. Do you want to let Windows breathe? You want to let Windows... See, Windows has prefetch buffers where frequently used programs... See, when you first boot Windows, the RAM use is very small. Challenge for everybody. Reboot your system and do nothing for an hour. Let it sit. Come back and watch the RAM use. You'll be shocked. Windows prefetches and preloads programs that you frequently use and puts it in your spare memory. And as you use your computer and as you load and unload programs, it's reducing stress on your mm -hmm. SSD, it's mm -hmm. reducing the uh, the writing to your SSD. It's helping it wear level. It um, it makes your system more responsive. 
I generally don't like to go over 50% RAM use in most cases. There, there's exceptions at the very high end. If I have 128 gigs of RAM and I'm doing you know, high-end content work, using 70 or 80 gigs of it is fine. But if you're using 70 or 80 gigs of active memory, 50 gigs of cache is not nuts. It just, it makes the entire system more responsive. And if you've got multiple monitors and you're doing development work for work, exactly, 64 gigs of RAM is not crazy whatsoever, which is why my upcoming Ryzen 9 5950X build, granted that's 16 cores, will absolutely have 128 gigs of RAM because I'll be doubling my cores from eight to 16. So I will definitely be increasing my RAM use. Again, I am not a typical user at home. I get that 100%. I am not advocating that normal people go out and buy 64 gigs of RAM. I'm advocating that normal people should really consider 32 at this point. And heavy users should go to 64. And crazy users like me should go to 128. Really, you should, you should, you should say non-multitaskers and multitaskers. The only people who should be on 16 at this point are people with Ryzen 5 1600s, RX 580s, who have one monitor and play one game. They don't multitask, non-multitaskers. But even then, you can max out 16 gigs of RAM in a lot of games these days, even with nothing else loaded. That's true. 32 is the new 16. But that's neither here nor there. That's to true. answer his question, um, you kind of sort of need to rebuild that machine. I would get a better motherboard, make sure you got enough RAM. I'd make sure you have a really good boot uh, NVMe. And if you're going to Zen 3, I'd consider, I mean, if, if you're doing development work and if work is involved, in other words, money is involved, meaning you do things that pay you money with this computer, then I don't think a um, Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 NVMe boot drive is nuts. Get a one terabyte, I know it sounds like a lot, get a one terabyte 980 Pro Gen 4 seven, gig, uh, yeah. seven um, gigabyte per second boot drive. You like that. And a secondary maybe Gen 3 drive for your data and other stuff. Well, he said he also asked, you know, Intel or AMD. I mean, gee whiz, you got the 10850K on Intel, you got the 5900X. I wouldn't do X. it. We're too close to Alder Lake. Alder Lake. We're too close. Um, yeah, but you're saying to skip Alder Lake. Yeah. So... Here's the thing. When I said that, uh, Zen 3 wasn't available. For the past nine months, Zen 3's not been available. Right now, you can buy all the Zen 3 chips. They're in stock at Newegg as we record this. Correct. And they're in stock for at or below MSRP. And it also depends on what you can get where you're at because you are in Singapore. So I don't know what you can get in Singapore. Well, all of our advice is based on U.S. prices. You'll have to do conversions and make your own judgment for foreign prices because we can't control that. For all I know, the i9-10850K is a ridiculously good deal in Singapore and all the Ryzen chips are ridiculously overpriced, in which case you should go Intel. But I can't make that judgment because exactly. I don't watch Singapore prices. Exactly. I don't know. I don't give advice in foreign currencies because there's no way I can keep track of 200 countries in the world. That's crazy. It's hard enough with the U.S. It's hard enough with the U.S. I'm, I haven't been as excited about Zen 3 for the past nine months. Because of the price. Because, because of availability and price. Because it's if you can't buy one, then why get excited about it? But a Ryzen 9 5900X in stock at or below MSRP with good motherboards that are stable and available, now I'm excited. This is, this is why we're doing this, because I'm, if you need to buy right now, that's the place to go. Zen 4 is not coming till next year. Correct. And I am reluctant, because it's going to be on a new socket, new RAM, new everything, DDR5. Yep, everything. I really want to see how that plays out before I tell everybody to go rush into it. But the same is true of Alder Lake. Alder Lake's going to be the first big little. It's going to be DDR5 and PCI Express 5. It's going to be LGA 1700. Let's see how stable it is when it comes out. Because Intel has been very, very stable the past five years. But that's because their platform is, shall well, we say, mature. It's it's old age. <laughs> but Intel has had those Krishnuffles. You know how we've talked about the fussiness of Ryzen? Intel has had fussiness. Well, yeah. I remember Moore's Law talking about it, which is why he doesn't like Intel. Right. But you, you have to put it within the perspective of the specific time in chips. Correct. Do you remember that i7-6800K you love so much? Yeah. That was on the X99 platform? I love that. You thing. had the third refresh. That worked great. Of the, right. Because there had been 18 BIOS updates to that board. 18. <laughs> the first round of X99 chipset boards were fussy as heck. Yeah. 
but you don't remember it because those boards actually came out two years before you got to see one. Oh. They had two years of cleanup. And the board that we used was actually the X99 Prime A2 refreshed of a refresh. Oh, okay. So that's why it was so good. But the first gen of those HEDT boards from Intel actually were pretty crap. It's just that that was 2014 to 2016, and so you had no awareness of it. Just like today, an X570 motherboard today with a, with a Zen 3 chip, I have a great. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Yeah. But the first couple of years of Ryzen could be, well, you lived, see, you lived through that, and so I you did. go, oh, man, that's so fussy. Yeah. And what do you have at home right now? My 10850K. So you have an Intel at home, and it just works. It does. It doesn't crash. It just works. I can do everything. But your previous system oh. had a Ryzen 5 3600X on an X370 motherboard. And it kept crashing. It was fussy. It was, yeah. And it had a clean install of Windows. It was very nice components, but it was just the wrong setup. So I think a lot of people don't realize that we give the advice we give based upon personal experience. We're not just guessing. No, we've lived it. We've used all of these. We have more than 20 computers built of like all the variations of Ryzen and Intel. Yep. And so after using them all, it gives you the ability to speak not, well, the spec sheet says, and the compatibility list says, yeah, that's nice. Um, I have found that those should be taken with a grain of salt. Hopefully that helps we in his uh, upgrade decision. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 Professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.